Alright, so hi guys! This might be very weird for you, but literally middle of recording this the first time, uh, my computer just decided to stop doing that. So, this is- I actually don't know what the top title is going to be like right now while I'm recording the audio, because the overall topic is, uh, pretty long and wordy, and YouTube does not like those long, wordy titles. No, they do not. It's probably why you're probably noticing a, uh, big influx in clickbait lately with some artists, because it's like, not technically not clickbait, cause it's what they talk about, but if they actually titled it what they wanted to, YouTube wouldn't share it to people. Yay! Joys of YouTube. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, if I sound nasally right now, it is not that I am sick. Allergy season is just, whew, it's, it's, it's affecting everyone I know terribly right now. Just, just terribly. And so, anyway, like most things in my life, I was just, you know, doing my normal life. Doing, you know, doing my commission things, working on Patreon rewards. Slowly ca- crying at my broken wrist. It's fine, I'm not, act- I, don't, I don't actually have a broken wrist. It was a... It was a joke, a uh, self-depreciating joke. Anyway, but listen to a couple podcasts like I do. And I was listening to some people talk about, like, a couple art podcasts. They were talking about, like, uh, you know, uh, things that, like, younger artists should invest in. And like with all of my topic videos and all of my art topic videos, uh, I would much rather have people learn from my mistakes instead of copying them and then learning the hard way that I did. Now... All the opinions shared are basically off of my own experiences and my own uh, trials and tribulations trying this out, as well as a couple of friends of mine who they dip their toe in the merch game, they dip their toe in the online store and con game, and it ended up biting biting them, and they just hated it, and they ended up, uh, well, like a lot of people where it was kind of like, well, I just wasted all this money on this thing, and now it's just sitting here, and I just, uh. But, you know, at the time... It was a good deal, and I like a good bargain. Now, if you guys are not new here, uh, I always talk about getting stuff at a good price. I'm all about those coupons and those sales, because your girl don't make a lot of money, so she gotta make do with what she can do. But as I get older, and as I, I start working through different things, I'm starting to notice differences. And this is obviously just in general. It's not just like, this is a new thing that's never happened before. This is just life. So your girl likes a good deal. But recently I've noticed some deals, while good, in the long run are actually pretty bad. And it's better to just bite the bullet and take those couple extra dollars than let something go to waste. So we're going to use an example here that happens all the time at the grocery store. This is for me. Uh, this isn't a story time or anything, it's just all the time. So my husband is Mexican, and we like getting the blocks and big bags of shredded cheese for when we make tacos, burritos, you know, quesadillas and all that stuff. We, 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 we both like cheese. Surprise, surprise. But we're just two people. We are not a family of four. We are not, you know, we don't live with anybody else. It's just the two of us and our cat. You really shouldn't feed your pets dairy products you should never feed your pets dairy products actually uh unless they're like made for that animal anyway but my (laughs) while i love my husband he cannot go food shopping with me uh because he like me we like a good bargain but i fell for this and something that is actually a bigger pet peeve for me than wasted money is surprise surprise the fat girl doesn't like wasting food (laughs) That's not a derogatory thing towards me. It's a fact. Uh, working to change that, though, as I talk about buying blocks of cheese. Uh, just not helping that stereotype, are we, Michelle? But anyway, <laughs> I fell into that trap where we would buy, where at my supermarket, and it is a deal that is constant. It's not a like once in a, a, once in a month, blah, blah. Every time I'm there, they do this. They do a thing where if you get the really, if you get two really big bags of cheese, it's like $3 cheaper than buying just the single bag of cheese and i would fall for it and the second bag of cheese would always end up going bad before you end up using it same with the blocks of cheese and i've tried freezing it and unfreezing it and for some reason it doesn't work with my freezer i I don't know maybe i have a different freezer than some people but it's too much cheese and not a good enough value I am now wasting food that someone else could be enjoying or using because I wanted to save a few bucks. And it's like this every time. And in the same note, 
two people really shouldn't eat that much cheese anyway. So I had to tell Cody, I'm like, it's a good deal. But the other bag's going to go bad before we eat it. Oh, but we'll be saving more money. Yeah, but we're wasting food. We are wasting things. I need to mute my phone. I thought I did that already. I guess I did not. Sorry about that. <laughs> Again, the joys of uh, having your office be your living room. But it's something I see all the time. And I see this with merch all the time. If any of you guys have seen my most recent Q&A where I uh, throw a lot of shade... Um, there's a lot of people I know that tend to go with the best deal when they are starting out. I am not saying this. Now, if you have an online store or an online following where every time you open, you sell out and everything, then you go for those deals. Those deals will help you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the person starting out. Because of me, I was that person. And I'm still, <laughs> I constantly talk about it because it is something that irritates me. I hate wasted things. I'm openly trying to have less waste in the world right now. And obviously you want more stock than less stock. And it's like, oh, well, you're making a profit off that stuff. Why are you complaining? I'm complaining because when you're starting out, all right, when you're starting out with a business in general, you don't want, you want a high profit margin, Okay. So if you start out and you see that you go on this wholesaler and it's something like 20 cents a charm if you buy 3,000 charms. I I'm totally spitballing here. And But the catch is they're like, oh, but we can only do 100 designs. Now some people are like, 100 designs? 3,000 charms? That sounds like... Holy crap, that's an amazing idea, but actually sit back and write the math out. That's a lot of merch and not a lot of designs to go for that much product. Unless you run a very, very big store where those 100 designs are going to sell like hotcakes. When I started out, I only had about 20 designs, I would say, give or take. And that was already too many starting out. And I ended up buying so much of those 20 designs that I'm still using it to this day. And the issue is I could have made so much more money if I had less inventory of that because then my profit would have been a higher overhead in which I would have been able to put that money towards buying new charms and new designs and new merch. It's also why now, while I'm currently in a little bit of a financial slump, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I would, I really, really wanted to do Halloween and Christmas merch this year, like, like charms and merch. I don't have the finances right now to do that. Now, if I was smarter, like I was before and, and, and before people start typing, before people start typing, I know, I know things like Kickstarter exist. I know things like pre-orders exist, but a perfect example of a living and learning experience is I recently did pre-orders for my uh, a glorified tabletop roleplay, my D&D group where we live stream on the Zodiac Lords channel. Hopefully every other week our schedules kind of conflict, you know, the joys of online friends and different time zones. But I wanted to make merch for that and I want to make more merch that I want to turn those sticker designs into charms. And I thought, you know what? I want to try vinyl stickers. I want to finally dip my toe in it. But all of the suppliers that people were giving me links to, they were amazing deals. They were. They were amazing deals. I'm not knocking this. But I had to order a minimum of 100 to, to 300 jar, uh, the stickers. I don't need that many stickers. I don't believe in one pre-order. I would sell 300 <laughs> of the designs when our live streams don't even get like a couple thousand views. You know, this is something that we do for fun, but we do have people who like it. And I do have a lot, we do get fan art. You know, I get a lot of fan art. My friends get a lot of fan art of our characters and stuff from it. And it's fun and we have a blast. But I was trying to find a supplier that was still a really good deal, but I could get a decent number. And there are, you know, cons to that as well. When I did the pre-order and I got the, I got the stickers funded, I ordered them that same day, but it took a month to get here. When I know some people who buy the big bulk orders, 
they get it for free in two weeks. So that was something else that I had to put down in my notes and I had to be like, all right, if I do this again, I have to be prepared that it might be a month until I get the stuff. So now if I want to do pre-orders, I'm going to have to do it months and months in advance. Well, that's not really smart if I don't have that big of a following. I have a decent number of followers. I'm not, this is not, do not take this as a poor me thing. This is just something I have learned. Someone like me who doesn't even have 100k on anything <laughs> wouldn't be wise to open pre-orders for something months in advance when it is a theme and has a tiny window. I love Halloween. I love spooky season. I love cute pastel goth shit. I like normal goth shit. I love Christmas time and stuff like that, but that is a very niche window. Very few people are going to want to buy Christmas stuff year round and Halloween stuff year round, realistically. So, you know, now I know. All right. So in the future, I'm going to have to make sure I have that money set aside and prepared for in advance to do it for, excuse me, for next year. Okay. It's a, it's a learning experience when you run your own online store and you're doing your own merch thing. That's not bad. I'm very happy that I got the orders I did because I ended up getting more stickers than I needed, but I also feel like it's not too many stickers, you know? And uh, by the way, I know this might sound like a promo, but it's not because some people missed out on the pre-orders. They are back up in the shop. So if you guys want to get some, click my link tree, go to my Etsy. They're there. Good to go. But <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, something I learned though is, you know, sometimes your, short, your store doesn't sell. Sometimes your stuff doesn't sell. And especially if you make something that is very time sensitive and you don't realize it's time sensitive that's another thing you need to put into account you know i i once heard a very 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 a uh, good thing of advice from an artist in a podcast years ago I, I don't remember who it was so i'm very sorry i can't repeat it but they said something along this i remember they were very very big on the tumblr at the time they said something along the lines of out of every thousand um you know, uh, followers, watchers, subscribers, whatever, out of every thousand, one is guaranteed to buy something. And I used to think that was a very low number, but now that I'm in the merch game and I'm doing that, no, that number makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I can guarantee I will probably sell a charm a month with the following I have right now. Cause that's normal. I usually sell about anywhere between, you know, uh, two or three, maybe I get more if I'm doing a special thing or a sale on my online store. That's where most of my money doesn't come from, you know? But there are other people where they sell, they sell hundreds of orders. You know, that's another thing you have to put into account. You know, you have to put into account shipping. You have to put into account this and that. And it's it seems great in the long run because I fell for this trap. Where it's like, oh, if I, 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 I really want to do this and the best deal is this. No, no, no. But what if you made a mistake? That's another thing that happens. You know, some suppliers don't check your mistakes for you. Now you got a giant ass bulk order of something that you can't even sell or give away. Well, some people give them away, but you can't even, you know, some people can't give them away. Now you're just sitting there and staring at it. And it's better when starting out to try to find places or find group orders or find, um, you know, uh, like groups on uh, like a uh, surprise, surprise. I've actually heard uh, a lot of artist alley Facebook groups are like really, really helpful with that kind of stuff where you can find group orders where you can be like, Hey, can I get like eight of something, you know, instead of like having to get a minimum of 20 of something, you know, or, or, and if you do do pre-orders, you know, explain like, Hey, I need to get X number of pre-orders before I can actually ship it out. And in that case, you do not touch that money. It's going to be hard. You're going to be tempted, but you can't touch that money. That's a mistake I've also made in the past. Not so much with pre-orders, but with other things where it's like, okay, let's do this thing. And then I'm going to, and you know, then you're here and you, you're slowly refunding people because the money's not there and you couldn't, you couldn't give back what you did. And it's something I always say is you should always keep that stuff aside to keep it safe. You know, when I was having some hard times, uh, in October, I, had some money that I was like, oh, this will help a lot right now. But I couldn't touch that because my stuff still didn't come in for those pre-orders. And the last thing I would want is for those pre-orders to come in. And then I'd have to wait until the end of the month when my next paycheck would come through to be able to mail orders that people already got, you know? And my profit margin was already a set number. But when it's also higher, your number is smaller. People tend to hear, oh my God, it's a dollar a charm. 
It's a dollar a sticker. It's a dollar something. That's a great deal. But then do the math. If, if you know, if it's a dollar or something and you had to pay, let's just say, again, I'll use myself. When I made my very first charm order, I spent probably $500 on my like first big charm order because I was dumb and I got a lot of them, you know? So I had to make at least $500 before I made profit. When if I had done smaller and done cheaper things and other things to supplement the income, you know, for those things I needed, my profit probably would have only hit, you know, at like $200. And then then everything after that $200 is profit until it's sold, you know? So I had to make $500 before I could make even my money back that went into those supplies. And I think that's something that more people need to talk about when you are starting out. Because when you are starting out, you need to look for those things instead of looking for the deals. Look for group orders. Look for doing things with friends. It's another big thing I, I can I could totally, totally get behind is sometimes when I have the, when I have the spare money, but again, I don't want to make a full order myself, I'll pitch in with some of my friends. So we get a bigger order, but you can get a smaller number of the inventory so you're not just sitting on wasted space. You're not just sitting on things that are, you know, useless pretty much. And that's just something I really want to talk about because I see people falling for all the time and I fell for it. And sometimes I'm really tempted in a a stupid sense. And you see the deal and you don't see the actual full thing there, you know? And that's something you need to take into account if you want to do this full time, if you want to open and run an online store and have it be successful. That's another huge thing. There are some people, there are some people, I will end it with this. There are some people that are totally fine with doing online stores and stuff as a hobby and they make no profit off of it, but they make their money somewhere else. They're still safe. Again, not talking to those people, but you know what? If you're one of those people, you are a very lucky bean and I am happy for you. (laughs) Not everyone can be so lucky and that is a luck thing. And so with that being said, I hope you guys liked this art topic video. I try to make art topics. If not, I definitely make a video once a week on Wednesdays. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. And don't make the same mistakes I did. (laughs) Bye.